This is Droid. Droid is a package delivery robot designed to deliver food and parcels to your doorstep. It features a compartment for deliveries, six wheels and a live camera, meaning it can navigate its surroundings. But that's not all. Using a Raspberry Pi, we can live stream its current location to YouTube, meaning we can control it through live chat by simply typing the forward command. We can also control the directions of the bot with game-like controls. Also, by using text-to-speech, we can also type messages to interact with the real world. Here's an example of a subscriber testing it out. Let's check the latency. This is a test to check the latency. And with LED like indicators, we can travel in the dark. The goal in this series is to build a package delivery robot that can collect a payload and deliver it back home. In the last 10 years, we've seen rapid tech adoption in the delivery market, from same day package deliveries to a rise in the food delivery economy. As e-commerce giants race to keep up with growing demand, the idea of autonomous drones delivering small packages to your doorstep isn't too far off reality. But what if we can build ourselves a delivery robot that can do the same thing? I mean, a robot that can go from A to B and we can control it remotely from any part of this world without leaving our homes using a Raspberry Pi and an Arduino. Similar to how we humans have ears and eyes and other sensories to perceive our surroundings, this robot would need the same ability to navigate its environment in real time. This will be in the form of sensors as well as cameras to see, as well as a speaker and a mic so that the bot can interact with people in the real world through text-to-speech. But how do we control this robot in the first place? How it works. Game theory. We can control this robot by choosing a live stream platform. This example, we're using YouTube. The robot comes with two features. Starting with the controls. We can use the WASD commands to control the bot, meaning we can go forwards, backwards, left and right. Here's an example of me controlling the robot in a live stream on the development channel. The screen on the bottom right is what the camera sees and you can see the latency here is pretty low. And moving on to speech. We can control the robot by using the say command along with our message. Here's a test using Twitch. Dead. Hello, my name is and also on a YouTube live stream. It's Simon. So the idea here is, if we want to collect a parcel, we can interact with people using our keyboard. I would like to collect my parcel. Item number is 45630. Equipped with a real-time live stream, using these two features, we're now able to navigate the outside world. But the question is, how was this robot built in the first place? This robot is a simplified version of the delivery drone. Instead of using six motors, this robot uses four. This is a 3D model of the two in comparison. Let's break this down. These are the specific parts we'll be using. But a typical robot consists of these main parts. Firstly, the battery to power the robot. And the wheels. Taking this apart, the wheels are mounted to the motor shaft. Where the motor is attached to a motor driver. The motor driver is important 
as it allows us to control the speed and the direction of the motor and in turn the robot. These are the control inputs which would allow us to control the motors. Moving on to the Arduino. This will be the brains of the robot, which we can program. This is the wirings used for the robot. You can find more details on the parts and a diagram in the description below, as well as the Arduino code in the repo, which includes the 3D prints of the mini. And connecting the pins based on the diagram and uploading the code this allows us to control all motors, meaning we can make the robot go forwards, backwards, or even stop. And we can program this robot to do some basic stuff. For example, get us a bottle of water. Thank you. But the question is, how do we take the fundamentals of the smaller robot and, well, apply it to a larger package delivery robot? Coming up. We take the fundamentals of the smaller robot and apply it to the package delivery drone, including streaming from our Raspberry Pi using OBS to Twitch and YouTube. If you like this type of content, let me know by smashing the like button. It helps me understand and also for the YouTube algorithm. I'll let Droid say the rest. Also, I've started a second channel where Strictly is for live streams where you can control the robot. But more on that at the end of this video. Let's continue. Assembly of parts, building the delivery drone. Now the building process of the robot can be broken down into three main parts. The hardware, the electronics, and the software. Starting off with the hardware. These are the dimensions of the robot. The robot was assembled in parts using M3 screws. The main reason was the robot was far too large for the 3D printer bed, so it had to be broken down into parts. Now each part took just under two days to print. Here are all the parts together. And the delivery drone was broken down into three main segments. Here's all the segments all laid out, being the bottom base, the top base, and the lid. And this is how we're going to assemble it all together. And once it was all assembled, it was time to print out the eyes. Now the filament used was PETG clear filament, which gave a nice translucent glow when light was shone through. But since it's all in separate parts, we'll somehow need to merge the whole chassis into one body. And wood filler was the answer to this. It was a great way to fill in the gaps and we can sand down any excess. And now we can start to mount all six motors. A little flashback, based on the smaller scaled robot, we're pretty much using the same circuitry, but scaled up to handle delivery payloads. We will call this initial circuitry version one. We can now mount the circuitry into the chassis of the robot. Also, we can now take advantage of a larger battery to handle more motors for the robot to travel for a longer range. Now the robot was inspired by the Stormtrooper look. The lens were lightly painted black so it can let some light through, giving us this effect. And here it is, the robot itself. But how do we wire up the lights, as well as putting in the mics, the speakers, and how we streaming off the Raspberry Pi with the camera? Let's find out in the electronics. We're using LEDs for the eyes, as well as for turn signal indicators for incoming pedestrians these are programmable LEDs, 
similar to the ones used in Lightvest. The startup we built in four weeks. You can check out how to program the LED strips there. We're using a speaker and a mic for text to speech to interact with people. Let's check the latency. This is a test to check the latency. The camera will be mounted to the lens. For version one, we're streaming through OBS on the Raspberry Pi. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like a separate video of how to stream on the Raspberry Pi to Twitch and YouTube. Here's a little test of the audio and visual output. The performance of it is, and to see if there's a bit of a lag, which is able to. Now, the default frame rate was around 30 FPS, but this will be expected to reduce when in operation. And if you're wondering, we can also use a Pi camera. Here's a little comparison of the two. At the end, I chose to go with the webcam. And here's us streaming on Twitch. Here's all the components of the robot attached to the Pi, including the speakers, the mic, and the camera. But it's still a messy setup. And this is where the video sponsor comes in. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. As we wire up bigger projects, we'll eventually want to move from prototyping on a breadboard to something a bit more permanent, like a PCB. JLC PCB is a professional PCB manufacturing service that allows us to build our circuit board to fit our needs. In fact, this is the same service I use for Lightvest. If you would like to take your projects up a level, you can find a promotional offer in the description below. Okay, it's now time to get to the software side of the package delivery robot and how it works. So how are we able to control the robot through live chat to say messages like this? On both Twitch and YouTube. It's Simon. To better understand, let's use a Python program to show what's going on in the back end. Overall, messages we type into the live stream chat are received by the Droid server and checked and relayed to the robot via WebSockets. Having a closer look, when we send in the live chat, the server is listening to messages on the live stream with the say command and sends these messages to the robot as a JSON payload. And using the text to speech library, we can even alter the pitch of the voice. This is Droid testing its voice. Let me know in the comments below which voice you prefer. And for those wondering, there is additional filters that we can add to the chat as well as who can control the robot. Okay, that's speech done. But how do we make the robot move? Especially when we type commands into the live chat, like moving it forward. When it comes to controlling the robot, each directional command sends a message, like forwards, backwards, left, and right. So with this example, when we press W, meaning forward, the message is sent to the server, which processes and relays the data back to the Raspberry Pi. Having a closer look inside the robot, the Pi then relays the same message to the Arduino through a standard USB connection. So we can finally control the motors to move forward, reverse, and stop. And like an orchestra, all components have a part to play to make this robot function. It's now time to test out the robot. After putting it all together, here it is. This robot is currently being controlled wirelessly over the internet, doing a couple laps around the park. Well, slowly. Now, this is still version one, so the speed of the bot is gonna be capped just below walking pace for safety. We're looking to making the bot somewhat autonomous in the future. But let's get to the performance. This is Droid at its normal pace, at 30%, slightly slower than walking pace. And here it is at 85. 
and at 95, well, it's leaving the park. Now there are some improvements we can do, starting off with a more secure lid and lock. And with some early testing, the range of the robot is somewhat unknown at the moment, but given it did a couple laps and outlasted my camera, I'll take this as a good sign. Now, this robot can definitely be improved. For example, adding an alarm, improving the traction of the wheels, or even changing the way we interact with the robot from something like web sockets to something else like Kafka. So here it is. Also, let me know in the comments what things we can add to improve the robot. Now, for the next part, is figuring out how we can make it get some food. Would it get to the place? Would it lose connection? Well, that's for another video. Oh, and also for the second channel, being the development channel, here's a little snippet. I'll see you there in the live streams. As your name correctly, we're wrong. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. By the way, uh, consider liking the, the video and subscri subscribing to this channel. This is more of the development channel where um, I just do a lot of stuff and then uh, the actual main channel would just be more of the high high quality videos where I actually just get highlights. Otherwise, it's just gonna be a bunch of rambling on the main channel. So I just wanna uh, separate it like that. So this is the video. Thanks for watching and also leaving a like. Peace. My name is Evan. I'm out.